consumer. Uh, I think there's ways to improve upon the effort they've articulated, and I'd certainly like to see uh, the others in, their colleagues in the industry take it as well. I heard in the last several weeks a lot of reaching out, a lot of olive branches. We need to be partners, we need to be partners, we need to be partners. Uh, but for the concept of improved labeling, I'm disappointed that we didn't hear more from uh, industry in that vein, other ways that we can be partners. Uh, it's not too late, there's always tomorrow. Uh, to try to come up with some of those strategies uh, for partnering uh, because this crisis, again, nobody refuted it, we're all in agreement, uh, is, is truly a crisis uh, and an epidemic. Uh, but I will say this, uh, and I think you could take it from the tone and substance of questions that not only I had, but all my colleagues had here today, uh, to genuinely entertain that partnership conversation. You know, we have to come to the table sincerely and uh, hiding behind a slogan of calories or calories uh, was not received by this committee as a genuine uh, attempt uh, at that conversation. I just can't, get, you know, leave this hearing without uh, saying that. Uh, I think we did a good job of clarifying uh, I think we did a good job of clarifying the difference between discretionary calories versus non-discretionary calories as a beginning of breaking apart the calories or calories uh, slogan. Uh, I think portion sizes, although we touched on it today, didn't get too much into it, uh, are a significant part of the conversation going forward. So uh, clearly there's a lot of work to do yet, uh, but I thought this was a great first step. My um, information is that California is, not, if not the first, certainly one of the first and certainly the largest uh, state to want to get beyond just the knee-jerk, let's tax sodas, but sort of a technical substantive look at what's going on here and what else can we, should we be doing. So uh, with all of that, just again, I want to thank you all for your participation, for your patience uh, today. Uh, I'll turn it over here to my colleague, uh, Senator Flores. Thank him again for his participation for a bed and cleanup here as I have to leave in the bottom of the ninth inning. Thank you. Okay, I think uh, I want to thank the panel for testifying. As you know, this is on the record. We will take public comment at this point. We're going to try to keep it to two minutes. City Hall has a two-minute timer right in front of me here, so this is great. And uh, anyone who would like to go on the record for two minutes, I just need to state your name. Uh, and uh, we'll make sure that this is part of the official record of the Select Committee and also the Senate Health Committee. Good, after Good afternoon, Senator Flores and other panelists and who whoever's left. Um, a majority of sweeteners in soda and candy and other items these days is high fructose corn syrup about 85% of that is genetically engineered, either to have an insecticidal bacteria in every cell or for herbicide resistance so they can spray poison right on the plant and the plant will still grow. There's also been a push by the biotech industry in the last couple of years to get farms to grow genetically engineered sugar beets. That was dealt a blow in court, however, a lot of those genetically engineered sugar beets already went into the ground. So, besides the problems with phosphoric acid, caffeine, and other ingredients, besides the genetically engineered corn syrup, which is the main ingredient in most sodas, Diet Coke, for instance, doesn't have genetically engineered corn syrup, but has Monsanto's aspartame, which in extreme cases has been linked to such things as coma and death. George W. Bush, his favorite drink was Diet Coke, and if you think that helped his reasoning, Good luck to you. Dr. Story mentioned that there are lots of, mentioned, remember, wrote desserts on that slide and said, see, grains, milk, and candy is a lot of, are a lot of these calories. Well, genetically engineered corn syrup, that's from a grain, corn, and then 95% of candy, the main ingredient, is genetically engineered corn syrup. And so, and also the labeling, there should be better labeling and it should be visible. I sometimes 
don't bring my glasses to the store and it's often on a dark background and you can't really see what's labeled at times. And so please work to uh, tax sodas and otherwise control that horrific product Thank and you. also weed out genetically engineered Thank ingredients you. from the food supply. Thank you. Good seeing you again. Thank you. Good afternoon, Senator Flores. My name is Andrea John Coley. I am a registered dietitian. I am a spokesperson for the American Dietetic Association. I'm also nutrition policy coordinator for Los Angeles Unified School District. And for the past uh, seven and a half years, I have been working with the school district, specifically with uh, former board member Marlene Cantor, to improve the nutrition environment of our schools. And back in uh, 2000, 2003, 2004, we passed the uh, healthy beverage, or she, taught, we, uh, she authored and passed the healthy beverage motion and the obesity prevention motion, and now it is seven and a half years later, and we are still having much difficulty implementing those, uh, those policies because of the, the immense demand for sugar sweetened beverages and, and for the, the candies and the sodas, et cetera. And I, and I can tell you from what I have seen in the last seven and a half years is that not enough has been done. Uh, not enough resources have been directed toward the problem. And a, a lot of talk has been brought up about a, a tax. Certainly a tax would put resources toward that problem, either with social marketing, with increased access to healthy, healthy fruits and vegetables for our communities that don't have access to that. And that's largely what, what we have been seeing is we've been able to sort of improve the nutrition environment of the schools, but then they go out to their communities and they're in an, an unimproved uh, nutrition environment. And we need to throw more resources at that. And if we want to gently engage industry, they have a lot of those resources as well. And that is a way that they could take part in helping to solve this problem is to put some of those resources that have been going towards advertising, et cetera, towards increasing access to healthy fruits and vegetables, decreasing access to sugar sweetened beverages and some of these other products, and also changing some of the price structure of some of these items, increasing sugar sweetened beverage Thank prices you. and decreasing Great. some of the diet, et cetera. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. Good afternoon. My name is James Duran. I am chair of the Legislative Action Committee for the California Hispanic Chambers of Commerce, which includes over 60 chambers in the state of California and represents the interests of over 700,000 businesses in the state. Uh, we do not deny the issues of obesity and health. Uh, we think there are significant issues and are pleased that you're addressing them here today. We, however, would like to ensure that there is a balanced discussion and that comprehensive research takes place so we can understand exactly what's going on here. That research would include include the health impact of soda consumption on people. Uh, that research would include the economic impact of small business and consumers and what kind of adverse impact that includes. Uh, that research would include not singling out one industry or product segment because it doesn't make a whole lot of sense to me. Uh, generally speaking, our position is no on additional taxes and fees, no matter what form they take. Uh, by the way, it was not clear to me with all these scientific reports what the actual negative impact was of diet sodas. Uh, that was not at all clear to me how negative if it, if it was at all. Uh, I'm concerned that uh, that we do the right things to cure the problem and uh, I'm concerned about what we might tax next if we decide to tax this. Juice drinks, milk, candy, chips, wine, beer, spirits, fructose based foods, uh, vegetables, any consumable item. Where does this end? Uh, Finally, or not finally yet, but capitalism works for America. Let's not kill the spirit of capitalism with small business. And taxes do that effectively. Uh, obesity costs. I know it costs. I'd like to see you find ways to figure out how to control health care costs, which is part of the problem here in, in addressing diabetes, because 